Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 30th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from the not terribly windy and not terribly rainy Jacksonville, Florida. The DS Diary today introduced the latest update to his PNG dump tool. Well, the name sort of gives it away. It's a tool to analyze PNG image files. The tool identifies anomalies that are often used uh, in PNG files, in particular if they uh, contain embedded uh, malware, for example, if parts of the file are not properly compressed, which typically is the case for PNG. Iced ID is a malware family that takes advantage of this technique. And for Iced ID, the payload is usually RC4 encrypted, but the key is prepended to the payload. So DDS tool will now decrypt the payload for you. In case you wonder uh, why do they make it so easy, why is it just a key and then the encrypted uh, payload? Well, the goal here is not really sort of encryption per se to hide or the confidentiality of the malware. It's really more obfuscation. They caught, could probably have just XORed the payload uh, with that key and it would have uh, worked as well. Today, a blog post by a Vietnamese security company, GTSC, caused some concern as it reports about a new and so far unpatched but already exploited vulnerability in Microsoft's Exchange server. GTSC found out about this vulnerability when they analyzed a compromised server and they described the vulnerability as being similar to the infamous proxy logon issue. Now, it does require authentication, so there's a little bit of a hurdle to overcome for the attacker, but once the attacker is authenticated, well, the sky is the limit, so to speak, and GTSC found a web shell installed on the compromised server, which is something that was also done with the original proxy logon vulnerability. So far, there is no official statement from Microsoft about this. There are some indications that this may be real, that there is something real about this. Most notably, I think, uh, Trent Micro's Saturday Initiative currently lists two unpatched exchange vulnerabilities with a CVSS score of 8.8 as well as 6.3. And uh, in a blog post, Trent Micro confirmed that uh, they're basically seeing what GTSC is seeing, that these are uh, the new and not yet patched vulnerabilities. According to Trent Micro, they were reported to Microsoft about a month ago. On the other hand, well, exchange servers and proxy logon vulnerabilities have been heavily exploited. Vulnerable servers will likely have several web shells by now, so it may be a little bit hard to tell sometimes whether something was installed with an old or a new vulnerability. At this point, uh, check the GTSC blog for some IOCs. There is a specific IP address, for example, the web shell that they found connects to. Also, they offer some rules to rewrite respective URLs to block the exploit. Well, and of course, make sure that you applied all the existing patches to your exchange servers. And uh, yes, you know, proxy, log, proxy logon is heavily uh, exploited so definitely want to be up to date with this if you're not up to date with patches assume the server is compromised and for detection kitty nichols uh, pointed out uh, rules to detect the proxy logon exploit and really what it leaves behind that's sort of what you want to look for here kind of uh, iis starting command.exe and some of uh, these uh, standard things that are then being done once the attacker hits the server this will help you detect uh, any vulnerability after it's being exploited another uh, popular target for attackers of course is vmware esxi lately vmware patched multiple updates in the last few years and some of them have been heavily exploited vmware esxi is also not always the easiest uh, thing to patch in a network mandiant released the first part of a two-part blog post series discussing malware that uses a new persistent mechanism within ESXi. ESXi can be challenging to manage. Yes, it's sort of uh, Linux underneath, but you typically are not able to sort of simply 
install a lot of these sort of monitoring tools that you would have on a standard uh, Linux server. What Mandiant has observed is attackers using VMware vSphere installation bundles, short VIBs that are used to install then the malicious components on these servers. The malicious bundles uh, were found for Linux and Windows and they implement, well, basically sort of a backdoor again to execute code and then of course they also maintain access for the attacker. For more details and Mannion does a good job in sort of showing in the case of compromise and how these bundles exactly work, well uh, refer to Mandian's uh, blog post and just like for exchange make sure that you keep VMware ESXi updated and of course it's easier to keep that sort of off the internet as well. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Thanks and bye.